Hi guys, this is RC Shim in Mayanga. This is a really quick and easy video about how to build the new quad. The new quad is the X Jaguar from FlyPro. Comes in a nice little box. Actually, I thought it was pre built, but it isn't. It's a kit, but it's okay. And you really get a lot of nice and decent stuff with it. So I consider this, from the specs, I consider this a, a good buy. Uh, of course, I have to see if it flies good and also force, but it has 40 cent motors, ESCs. Yeah, I just show you the whole package. It comes really nice, sorted here. The motors, a set of props. A decent FPV cam, it's the Runcam Swift. Must be one of the best FPV cams I've seen in one of those sets. The flight control, it should be an SP3 racing, some kind of, an F3 controller. The power distribution board with the XD60 connector. The video transmitter. And it's supposed all to be stacked up in a tower. And in the second compartment, we have a little LED and beeper board. Cool. Cables. A decent battery, I mean, it looks decent. It's a certain 100, 100C four cell battery, and you will need things like this for this power hungry quad. Some more mounting, maybe for the antennas, stuff for the camera, frame parts. Oh, and the nice looking side parts. Jaguar parts which will form the upper section and they are I think they are aluminum those are the nice motors GT 2205 2300 kV not sure about the windings they look good to me but I'm not the motor protectors nice idea the electronics I mean this part here is lovely. It's a combined ESC power distribution board. These are the soldering pads where you would solder on the motors. And this is the connection point where you stack up the next board, which might be this here. Just stack it like this. And on top of the flight controller you would stack the video board. Which is a really nice concept. I like it. So you really have minimum cables involved in, in the wiring of the main brain. Extension cable for the antenna mount. Antenna mount is normal SMA, that's fine of course. Camera stuff, battery, velcro, a lot of bags with screws and the lovely frame. So the arms are 4mm arms. And now I get it, these are supposed to look like the claws of the Jaguar. So really a decent decent looking hardware. Looking forward to the build actually and <laughs> from a guy like me that means a lot. I only got this explosion drawing here. I will do a bit of a build video as well, but just showing you the, the most important hints. The arms, then this plate and the cross and the screw in four screws here. I have to glue this battery rubber protective thing here. Screw everything together. And Mount the power distribution ESC board this way. Keep in mind the battery strap is an alignment and once you insta install the PDB you define the direction of the quad. So now this is our front side. And of course you have to stack all the other components the same way. Minus the soldering job for the motors. This is really a uh, fast and intuitive build. Even this upper section was nice and easy to 
assemble. I mean, I didn't uh, put in all the screws necessary, I just wanted to assemble it for a demonstration. But this is how tidy your whole tower can look like. I love this. And I have some holes so that you can even attach USB to it. That's nice. Okay, short tip for the motor installations. It's best to screw on the motors on the arms before you assemble the frame because these drills are not symmetrical so it matters uh, which way around this arm is mounted. I had to switch two of the arms to the other side for these cables to go straight here and not some, somewhere here. So just a short note. And now I'm gonna solder the motor wires so the ESC power board here. I will show you a small drawing now which motor wires to reverse to have the correct direction from the start. I mean you could also have this board uh, set up with the BL Heli suite and change motor directions afterwards but yeah if it just fits from the beginning it's easier. Okay, quite excited at the moment. Uh, first connection of battery to power this whole thing up. Nothing smoked, so I'm happy. I did bind this FreeSky X4R receiver to my Tyrannis. I instantly had image. And now I guess I should fire up the clean flight configurator to check the channels and everything. This tells you the bands. The green light is the bands you're in. I'm on band D, which is the fat shark band. And over here we have four LEDs that display the channel you're on. So this is channel 1, channel 2, 3, 4. Two, uh, two LEDs is channel 5, channel 6. Channel 7 and all together is channel 8. And if you want to switch the whole RF band we are in, you have to long press this button. One, two. So now it blinks and I can. This is uh, band E, A, B, C, and D. Another long press confirms the RF band. This is how you can set the video transmission power between roughly 16 milliwatt to uh, 250 milliwatts. You have to hold this button, this is the channel selector button, prior to, um, to, to plugging in the power. So it's a bit tricky. So I hold the button, turn it on, then this whole thing blinks. And if you check now we have 40 milliwatts, if I let it go, it 
goes to the high power setting which is apparently around 250 milliwatts. If we repeat this, it's now in this uh, slow blinking means we go back to the low mode. And the low mode now looks like around 20 milliwatts. Which is legal for racing. I have to change the VTX OSD board on the FlyPro X Jaguar. That's what I'm going to do now. And hopefully can do the first FPV test flight tomorrow. Finished the swap of the plate here and marked this defect. <laughs> Wasn't too hard, maybe half an hour to disassemble the tower and get into the section where the plate is. And I also swapped the linear polarized antenna for a SPV antenna. I just want to have good conditions for my test tomorrow. And here is the GPS logger for speed tests. So hopefully we will see soon how fast this thing goes. Okay guys, so this is the maiden flight of the X Jaguar from Flypro. Wish me luck! Yes. No way! Not totally sure what's wrong, but... I need to hook this up to clean flight once again and take a look at it. I'm not too sure if the pits are correct. Uh, it should like crazy and that's not normal. Okay, now or never. What could go wrong? Oh my god. Okay, it flies, but it sounds like uh, oscillations on the P gain. So far, a good, good first flight. Nothing crashed, no props broken. Uh, I'm fine. This thing is a rocket. This thing is a rocket and I love it. <laughs> I love it. Okay, this was a successful first line of sight test flight. Gonna tune it a bit more, but I really like the power and it, this thing should be a rocket in FPV mode. Can't wait to try it out. Again on the field in terrible weather, but it's okay. Hopefully can speed test it today. This is what it looks like and it has this little GPS logger on top here. Hope he has a good reception in this fog. We will see. Okay, while I wait for the GPS flat here to become green, which says enough GPS satellites, I'm, I'm gonna show you how I did set up the LEDs. I have linked the LEDs to throttle. So the more throttle you give, the more it changes to green. So the idea is if I break it's red and if I give full throttle it's green. Works nice, easy to set up, I can tell you how if you don't know, but it's easy. Yeah. Like this. And now we have GPS lock. GPS measurements turned out to be not so accurate on this foggy day, but I compared the video feed to the rampage, which was around 130 kilometers, and this one was definitely faster, so I, I estimate somewhere between 130 and 150 kilometers. But I will do a measurement again in better conditions with hopefully accurate GPS. A low volt warning.
Okay, it really feels nice. I still have the vibrations on the cam. I guess it's on the cam. Not all the time, but sometimes. The response is super. Up in the fog is like not super. <laughs> Super easy to catch because it's almost no weight. And it screams. But it screams. Stable mode. See if I can hit my landing pad. Yeah! 4 minutes and 24 seconds. Okay, super happy with the flying characteristics. I almost flew it a bit too long. 11% in my 1300 milliamp battery here. Okay, that's it for the review. Thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe button and leave me some comments and also check out the description box to find many more tips to this copter.